Hey folks, Sam here with Sam Wood Outdoors. Shitty day outside, so we're here in the woodshed and we're going to be talking air guns. PCP air guns to be specific. Um, if any of you guys have followed me for an extended period of time, you know I'm pretty big into air guns. In fact, I was shooting air guns before shooting air guns even was a cool thing to do. Um, we all had pump up air guns, hopefully, when we were kids, you know, and then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm up there a little bit in age, uh, but I remember the, the Sheridans, the pump up blue streaks and silver streaks at 177, 22 cal, 20 cal, single shot, pump them up, badass air guns back in the day. Um, but now, air guns has, has, has evolved, has become cool, Our companies are spending more money in uh, the advancement of the products, and, and it's just, it's pretty crazy what has become of air gunning. You know, there's a lot of guys out there now, uh, the celebrity hunters, um, you know, are getting paid to tell you what gun is best, and most of them don't know their ass from a hole in the ground, haven't shot a whole lot of guns. I've shot a whole array of air guns, uh, many different manufacturers, many different styles and types, and I don't get paid by anybody to tell you what to buy, and I ain't going to be that guy. Um, I will say that I, I get support from Air Venturi, uh, I get support from Pyramid Air, and I get support from Utah Air Guns. Um, so them are the guys that I'd like you to support. So if you're going to buy something and one of them guys have it, go to them, get it for them because they support this channel. I used to be sponsored by Crosman. That's where I got my start. Uh, you know, you shoot a few cats, so the cat ladies make a few calls. And when you got a company that's run by marketers and not hunters, they tend to cost you to the curb. But that's okay, because now I'm kind of free to say whatever the hell I want, produce or uh, endorse whatever the hell I want, and that's a pretty good thing. So let's get on with it. First of all, there's a ton of different kind of air guns out there. There's the pump air guns. You know, we all had them as a kid. Um, and then you go into the brake barrel guns, which was very popular probably for a short period of time. Um, you run from Springer air guns uh, that were, you know, they, they compressed the spring when you shot them uh, to uh, 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 nitro pistons, which is basically the gas ram, like on your uh, hatchback trunk. And then that's compressed and kind of does the same thing as a spring. A little bit more consistency with that. <laughs> but them guns are pretty finicky. Um, I have shot them. I got some great ones. I got some shitty ones. Um, but I surpassed that. I don't even hardly shoot them anymore. The only time I really get out the brake barrel guns on my trap line, I take a 22 caliber nitro piston, uh, and then that's what I use for dispatch of coons and coyotes and stuff like that. What I shoot almost every single day when I'm not working is PCP air guns, pre-charged pneumatics. Um, and basically you're taking and storing high pressure two to 3,500 PSI in a tank or two tanks or in a tube on the gun. It's stored and it helps you get multiple shots um, before you have to fill. So you're not really filling, shooting and then filling, shooting and then filling, you know, after every shot. You're getting multiple shots and some of them go from 12. You know, some of my big bore air guns, I get six shots. Uh, some I get five shots. Uh, some I get 10, then you get up into, into these guns here, you know, and they go anywhere from 25 to 50 shots per fill. So it's not like I'm filling every single shot. But now let's talk about filling the gun. This is probably, the, this is the hidden cost of PCP air guns. And this is a cost that just like shocks a lot of people. And I don't want you to have sticker shock, but I want you to understand the necessities of having this stuff. You need a way to fill these guns. And they take a lot of pressure, like I said, 2,000 to 3,500 PSI. So you're going to hear entry-level air guns and entry-level air gun kits when you start looking. And they're going to lure you in. It's a necessity of the air gun world for them to get you to come into air guns, spend a minimal amount of money, and then spend more money to get what you want. I'm telling you right now, 99% of you are not going to be happy with a entry level air gun or an entry level air gun kit. Entry level air gun kits will sell you a pump. This is basically just like a bicycle tire pump when you were a kid. 
only it's high pressure, two stages. I don't know how it all technically works, but it will fill your gun to 3,000 PSI. If you shoot a shot, fill it up, shoot a shot, and fill it up. It's not too bad. Um, uh, yeah, it is. It sucks. This, 99% of you are going to be like me. I'm a, well, I'm not fat, but I'm a fat boy and I like to shoot. And it didn't take me long to realize I ain't pumping up. If I have to pump every time, I'm not shooting. And I like to shoot, so I knew I had to have another option. So that was to go and get scuba tanks. And then, you know, like I said, this is back when uh, shooting air guns wasn't cool. There wasn't a whole lot of information out there, kind of limping along. Um, you know, so I went and got a scuba tank. And then I went to the scuba shop and I took it in there. And, you know, scuba shop's 20 some miles. I drive up there and they're going to fill it up at six bucks. I hand it to them. They're like, hey, you know, this tank expires in a month. We're going to have to hydro it. I'm like, what? I just spent a hundred bucks. You're telling me I'm going to. I won't be able to use it for a month, and then I got to get it tested. Really wasn't expensive, but I was out, uh, didn't have my tank for a while. Uh, you know, I would drive up there and shoot. I'd need more air. I finally figured out uh, it was going to be a lot easier to own two scuba tanks. I'd leave one up there, uh, or, you know, and I got one here, and it just, it, I could have my daughter take it, and I'd bring it, and then scuba tank was a great option. But I quickly learned that wasn't where I wanted to be. A couple of reasons why. One, it was an inconvenience. Better than pumping, but still an inconvenience. Two, you go to the scuba shops, they can fill you up. My guy would fill my tanks up to about 32, 3300 PSI. My gun shoot 3000 PSI. It wasn't taking long and I didn't have enough air to completely fill my guns. <laughs> and then, you know, you, I would prolong it. Pretty soon I'm shooting down below where my guns optimally worked. And then and it was is what it was. So then I went and along came a compressor, uh, Air Venturi compressor, they're about 1200 bucks. Filled all my tanks up to where they needed to be, but then I realized, you know, 3000 PSI tank wasn't it, so I had to buy these little, I bought these little, we call them guppy tanks. They were 4500 PSI, one thing led to another. I'm telling you, avoid all of the tank bullshit, get yourself a 4,500 PSI carbon fiber tank. You go to a scuba shop, they'll fill you up to 3,500, 3,300, somewhere in there. And it is the, by far, the best option. Tanks can cost you about 300 bucks, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But it's where you're going to want to be. No matter what, you're going to want a tank. Even if you own a compressor, you're going to want a tank. Until now. This is uh, September of 2018. Um, by December of 2018, there's going to be a pump out, uh, either Air Venturi, Pyramid Air, somebody's going to have it. I think you can pre-order it right now on Pyramid Air. But you go there, you pre-order it, I think it's about 600 bucks, and it, you plug it into your car, cigarette lighter, or you can plug it into a... 110 outlet and it's used for filling just the gun won't fill up a big tank like this not designed to do it but it'll fill up the, the gun um, and for most guys that's all you're going to need um, but i would stay still get a tank you're going to want a tank the compressor is going to be great for me i'm going to buy one uh, I have a big compressor right now, it fills all my stuff up to 4,500 PSI, but I'm going to buy one of the little ones just because when I travel, I have to travel with these tanks empty. Then you get somewhere and you got to figure out a scuba shop, and like you said, you're only at 3,400 PSI, blah, 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 or you got to pump, and I'm telling you, my fat ass ain't pumping no more. So you're going to go through all that, and this little pump and this little compressor is just going to solve all the problems. It's going to fill your gun, might fill a guppy tank. I don't know, guppy tank is basically one of these only smaller I have two of them that I take just for hunting I don't carry this big tank around I only carry this in my truck I fill my guppies off of it but I also fill my guns off of it so you're looking at tank is definitely where you're going to want to be to start out even if you go and or you're going to go to one of these compressors either one you're 99 percent of you are going to be pretty happy um the only other really piece of gear that I'm going to tell you that you're really going to need if you get into the PCP air guns is a range finder. A lot of you guys already have one. Any of you don't, definitely get one. 
you know what? I paid 200 bucks for this Leopold RX 1300 and it is freaking awesome. These air guns have substantial elevation changes from 25 to 50 to 75 to 100. You need to know where you're at. You see on most of my guns, I have a cheat sheet. It tells me how many, how many uh, mill dots and stuff I gotta raise up at certain yardages. And you need to know them yardages. So this is another thing that you probably just go right out and get. Many of you already own it. It's pretty easy to justify a rangefinder. But if you're gonna shoot PCP air guns, any kind of distances, you need a rangefinder. You really need to know the range that you're shooting. So we got all that. Let's get into the guns. The guns. Like I said, you're gonna hear entry level PCP guns are gonna be right around 200 bucks. Um, I would say, honest opinion, stay away from them. If you're already looking to get into PCP air guns, you don't need a entry level gun. Entry level gun is just kind of lure you in. It's a couple hundred dollars. And that all the companies know, once they get you, you're moving up. You're not probably going to stay with an entry level gun. I would say 90% of you are not going to stay with an entry level gun. Uh, they're made a little bit smaller. They don't have... You know, the cheek welds, it's not a lot of effort gone into them. So you're going to spend less money. They're a lesser quality gun. And then you're going to try to sell it. You're going to lose your ass because there's a million of them out there. And then you're going to go up into what I would call an entry level gun. My one that I would back would be the Benjamin Marauder or the Crawl Jumbo. Um, <laughs> they're about $500 guns. There is a gun that just came out that I'm going to endorse with an asterisk, being that I've never owned one, I've never shot one, but they're getting good reviews. And guys, if you want reviews on air guns, I was going to be that guy. I started to do some reviews and stuff like that. Dude, that shit is not me. It bores the hell out of me. Feet per second, foot pounds of energy, uh, ballistic coefficient, blah, 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 blah. That's not me. If you want to find out any of the specs on any of these guns, you can go to channels. The one I highly recommend is uh, Air Gun Exploration and Advancement or Advancement Exploration. Well, it's worded. I don't know exactly what it is. That dude knocks it out the park, home run with all the technical stuff that you're not going to see me do on my channel. He, does, he goes through all of that. He puts the rifles through the test. The guy's an amazing shot. Um, so you're going to get an honest thing from him. He's not really paid or endorsed by anybody. He does get the guns. Uh, some of them he sells. I don't know if he keeps But whatever. That dude, I have confidence in what he says. And if that's what you're looking for, go there. If you're looking for the redneck who kills shit, that's me. If you're looking for the average redneck that kills shit, that's me. I'm going to tell you what these guns will do. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to show you what they do. And I I've done a lot with these guns. So, like I said, I was shooting air guns before air guns were even cool. Another guy that does uh, a lot of the air gunning stuff is Ted Beer from Ted's Holdover. Another great YouTube channel. Probably the most technical shooter out there as far as wind, elevation, stuff like that. You can learn a ton from him. Um, and then the other one is Matt Dubber. Uh, he's from South Africa. He does a lot of hunting, but he incorporates a lot of the technical stuff. And you know, he's, he's got the higher end guns. He's doing the higher end stuff. Um, but he's got a really good channel too. And then, like I said, there's me. I'm hunting, fishing, trapping, cooking, and I'm the redneck that goes out whatever doesn't kill shit. So there's a lot of information out there, and there's a lot of guns out there. And I'm going to tell you what I know about the guns that I have. So, like I said, Fortitude, Asterix. I don't own one. I don't shoot one. Guys, I know that are shooting them have good reviews on them. And they come in at about 300 bucks for the gun. I don't know if you get a scope for that or not. I just know it's about 300 bucks. I would say that is going to be the bottom level of where I would tell somebody to start would be a Fortitude. Um, just up from that is the Benjamin Marauder or the, the Crawl Jumbo. Two freaking awesome guns. Um, this, for me, probably... My number one gun, you guys see me shoot this thing. It's been all over, it's been on many hunts with me. I've killed a pig with it. I've killed just all kinds of stuff with this gun. Sentimentally, my favorite gun. I'll always see me having it. you always see me shooting it. I've never got anything bad to say about it. 
and then it comes in at about 500 bucks without a scope. I think you get 599 with a scope. I don't recommend getting the scopes. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, stay away from the packages uh, because I'm going to tell you for just a little bit more money, you can end up with a really nice deal. So anyways, this gun right here, 75 yard solid gun, uh, the crawl, 75 yard solid gun. You know, Fortitude, I think, is a 50-yard solid gun. You'll shoot 75 with it. This is 75 yards solid. You'll shoot 100 with it, no problem. Um, but just like I said, all-around good gun. Fortitude only comes in a 22 caliber. Uh, I would recommend getting a Marauder in a 25 caliber. They just seem to perform better, a lot more knockdown, and, and like I said, that's what I got and what I use. So that's where I'm at. Now, this is a first-generation Marauder. Second generation Marauder, the ones we're selling now, I have two of them. I have one that's in the composite stock, uh, cheek, uh, it's got a higher cheek, adjustable cheek rest on it. I like that idea. I love the cheek rest on it. Um, 25 cal, shoots like shit. It's a 75 yard gun stretching it, or a 50 yard gun stretching at the 75. This one right here is a 75 yard gun and I can stretch it out to 100. <laughs> but then I have the Armada, which is basically the exact same gun as the Marauder, only it's got it, it's built on an AR type platform, um, adjustable stock and all of that stuff. And it shoots freaking amazing. It shoots just as good as this gun, 75 yards all day long, shoot out to 100 yards, pretty, pretty easy. Um, so I think the new ones are a crap shoot, don't really, that's where it's at. I'm just being honest with you. I have one that's great, I have one that's not so great. You're gonna have a ton of people come out here and say, oh, mine's awesome, blah, blah, blah. And you have a ton say, mine's for shit. And I'm just gonna say, I told you so. Um, the Jumbo, great gun, uh, definitely ranks right there with the Marauder. I get a few more shots for shot count with it. Um, the magazines, kinda, they're not the greatest. I wish they would spend a little more on their magazines and then it would make that a great gun. Um, but I did take this gun when I bought it and my whole idea behind getting this gun was to send it in and get a little tune-up done on it. So I sent it to Annihilator Air Guns and they tuned it up, put some different ports in it, drilled some stuff, did, the, did whatever it is he do, does and then he turned this into a 100-yard gun. For $200 more, I think I had... Uh, $600 in the gun, put 200 bucks in it, 800 bucks made it a solid 100 yard gun. I love it. It's a little bit loud. I'm um, getting a Donny FL uh, suppressor for this one, and uh, I, th I think it'll be pretty badass. So that's what you got into this one. So, you know, you go from 500 to $600 for the better gun. Great guns. $200 more, you get it tuned up, and you got yourself a badass gun. Um, so you go from that <laughs> to uh, another gun that I'm going to endorse with an asterisk, and that is the FX Streamline. It's a thousand dollars, nine hundred ninety-nine bucks, a thousand bucks, but it's a solid hundred-yard gun. It's pretty badass. Uh, it's just a they streamline, and that's all got its name, I guess. They streamline some of their production ways at FX to make that gun. And it's just a good gun. It's a traditional style, more like the Marauder. Um, so you got the Marauder's traditional long gun style. Then you get into this, which starts to become more of a bull pup. Um, so the Streamline is more like the Marauder, but a solid gun. Thousand bucks, if that's where you're going, and you have a thousand dollars, and that's where you want to be with your gun, is a thousand bucks. Got to remember, you got all this other stuff into it. You got a compressor, tanks, pump, whatever. You had another thousand bucks. You're not going to go wrong. I don't think I've ever heard anything bad about a streamline. So Asterix, I don't own one. I am going to buy one just because I want one, um, and I think they're great guns. And I, and I, you know, I just. <laughs> It is what it is. So I'm gonna spend another thousand bucks. I will own that gun. Um, be a fun gun for other people to use or borrow or whatever. So, so now we went from three hundred dollars, five to six hundred dollars. Uh, tuned it up to eight hundred dollars. Now we're at a thousand dollars with a gun, and 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 then we're gonna go for the big jump.
This is my new gun right here. This is probably the crown jewel of the air gunning world. Um, is the FX Impact X. X has to do with their X barrel. Uh, this is a 700 millimeter barrel and it's tuned. Uh, it's just a good gun. Bear gun, 2,000 bucks. But dude, let me tell you, this is 100 yards shooting less than a quarter size group consistently. These other guns, they'll do it, but they don't do it consistently. The FX does it consistently, time after time after time after time. You're paying a lot more, so you should expect a lot more, and it definitely delivers. For the price point, all these guns deliver exactly what you would expect out of them. You got the $500, $600 Marauder Crawl, they deliver exactly what you want out of them. You know, a 75 yard gun, they shoot really well, they're economical, they do it. You know, you get up and you tune your gun, and you know, you get a $1,000 streamline it does exactly what you want it to do these entry level guns they don't do what you want them to do that's why you're going to end up going this direction anyway so you might as well jump in what you can afford is where you want to be um and now you take this fx right here i put the dual tanks on it i got the wing scope mount i got it tuned up uh, i got a bipod i bought the uh, extended magazine from uh Side shot, uh, or you know, the extra capacity magazine from Side Shot. It's so badass, they ended up putting balls on it. I mean, really. So now you're looking at, you know, I got probably got $3,500 in the bear gun. So now you have the bear gun, you spent that money, you got the pump, you got the compressor, whatever you're doing there, you're already here. And remember, I told you, don't buy the packages, don't buy the scopes. <clears throat> That's because. I think the scopes are probably the most overlooked part of air gunning, yet one of the most important parts of air gunning. Scopes. When I started, I had a center point scope on my Marauder. It came with it. It was a freaking amazing scope. I think it was 4x14 uh, adjustable parallax, adjustable objective, which in air gunning, when you buy a scope, there's going to be two things I tell you to buy. Without a doubt, no matter what scope, you can go to the Vortex, you can go to Athlon, you can go to Center Point, you can buy any scope you want. Make sure it's a first focal plane scope. That is huge and important. Has to do with uh, the etching of the glass. Your, your, uh, when you zoom in on a normal scope, it brings the, the target in, but the crosshairs stay the same. When a first focal plane, when you zoom in on an object, the object comes in and the crosshairs also get bigger. Really helps you with your holdover and stuff like that, your sight picture. Um, and it's very important, I feel, in an air gun. You want that first focal plane. The other thing is having an adjustable objective. So the, usually the knob here on the side, a lot of times are in the, in the front, but I suggest getting the knob on the side. A lot of guys think that's for focusing. Um, but it really has to do with a with adjustable objective, which is your, your lenses, they're adjustable, it focuses it, but what it does is it takes care of your parallax. Um, a lot of scopes are, are, are set at 100 yard parallax, that's optimum where, you, you know, if you're looking, the two lines will meet, it's just, but if you take it, and I didn't realize this until I got into air guns, but you go to like 25 yards and you're looking and you move your head, the crosshairs will move. I mean, smack your kid in the back of the head. Why ain't you shooting? Get your head down, blah, blah, blah. You sight in the gun, it's... Uh, I'm telling you, adjustable parallax or adjustable objective and getting that parallax right, it's going to save you. You got to remember, we're shooting 25, 50, 75, and 100 yards. Trust me, you don't want to dick around. You want to get an adjustable parallax. Um, as far as scopes go, like I said, you can buy just about any scope and put them on these PCP air guns. You don't have to worry about the recoil or anything else. They'll work. Um, I started shooting these Athlon scopes. I had a uh, Crossman center point on my Benjamin Marauder. Worked great. Loved it. Never had a problem. Since then, the company's been bought and sold and this and that. Center Point's owned by Crossman. Crossman's owned by an investment group. And listen, guys, this is a lot of times when quality 
gets put on the side burner instead of, and price point becomes more important than making a profit. So that being said, right now, Crosman and Center or Center Point is a crapshoot if you're going to get a good one or not. Just look at the reviews. I'm not bullshitting you. I love my one that I first got with the gun. Never had a problem with it. Other guys have. So don't buy it. Just get a good quality scope when you get a good quality gun. You're spending this much on a gun, spend a little more on a scope. The, the Athlon scopes, I love them. I actually turned down a pro staff position with them. Um, we just didn't see eye to eye on the final details, but I still love their scopes and I still will endorse their scopes even though I'm not getting paid. This is the Talus. It's a four by 14 by 44. I bought this scope, it's a $150 scope, and I bought it originally to put on my crawl. But once I got it, I loved it. So I bought another one and I put it on my Marauder. So the both of them have a Talus scope, I love it. It it's definitely works perfect for these scopes. Got a lighted red, uh, reticle, the whole thing. I love them. Um, most of the time, I crank it up to 14 power, and that's where it stays. You got to remember, we're shooting air guns. Most of the time, we're shooting stationary targets, whether it be a stationary squirrel, a bird, or punching holes in paper. So I leave it at the, the high power, and that's where I'm at. So then, when I got my impact, took it out, put a talus on and I took it out and I started reaching out to 100, 120 yards. I realized that 14 power just wasn't enough. I think I wanted a little bit more. So I went and got me an Argos. These retail at about 369. It is a six by 24 by 50. First focal plane, adjustable reticle or adjustable uh, objective and uh, Man, it is badass. I love it. Love it. So, I love it so much that I just ordered their Cronus. Um, and that's a $1,700 and $1,800 $1, scope. You start adding to that, this gun, this gun right here, the Impact. Retail, when I'm all set up, is probably going to be over, oh, probably close to $6,000, something like that. But the $35,000, $45,000. Yeah, fifty-five hundred, six thousand dollars Put the Donnie FL silencer or suppressor on there. And you realize that you guys are, most of you are not going to do that. But I'm telling you, scopes are pretty important. I am going to take this scope that Argos is going to end up on my crawl. I'm going to stick with the Athlon Talus on my Marauder. I'm going to put the Cronus on there. I have it. I'm... I can't say enough about buying a good quality scope. I don't care if you buy Vortex or you buy your favorite, whatever. Don't be afraid to spend the money. You can take a $500 gun and get it to shoot like a $1,000 gun with a $300 scope on it. That's how important scopes are when you're dealing with, with precision shooting. You know, guys are out there now and they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on precision rifles and struggling getting the right optics. Same thing is happening here with the, with the air gun world. Guys were struggling. I was looking at Night Force. I was going to put a Night Force scope on here. And I got to weighing it all out and, and looking at everything. And, and I really like the, the, the Athlon scopes. They got a great warranty program. My buddy Ron had one. Ended up at uh, the adjustable objective thing started. It didn't work one time. Um, he sent it in. <laughs> the dude, they fixed it, sent it back, didn't cost him nothing. He dropped his gun, bent his bell on his scope, sent it in, they sent him a new scope. So if they're going to treat the customers like that and they got the quality I need, that's what I'm going to go with. But anyways, guys, that's kind of the gist of my air gunning. Uh, you can take it for what it's worth. But like I said, I've shot a ton of them. I don't have no reason to sell you anything. I don't make any money off it. Hell, I don't even make money off these videos anymore because I'm not advertiser friendly. But I don't give a shit. I'm just a redneck that likes to kill stuff.